Buenos días a todos y gracias por estar con nosotros esta mañana en este evento. Este es un evento tan importante que estamos celebrando la herencia de hispanidad en el mes de septiembre 15 hasta octubre 15. Pero esta, nuestra cultura se celebra todo el año, no solamente en un mes. Nosotros celebramos todo el año, especialmente al Center for Hispanic Policy Research and Development. Um, so once again, welcome and thank you for joining us this morning during Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. Although it is from September 15th to October 15th, we ensure that we celebrate our culture and the richness and, and the beauty of being such a diverse culture during all year long, especially at the Center for Hispanic Policy Research and Development. So I would just like to welcome everyone and introduce my co-host this morning, the Executive Director from the Historic Commission, Ms. Sarah Curitan. Thank you so much, Sarah, um, and welcome to everybody. Um, this year is a very, very special year. You're going to hear more about that in just a moment because it is uh, the centennial of the passage of the 19th Amendment. So uh, this morning's discussion is absolutely relevant. Um, and I, I do want to share with you that the Historical Commission um, has two major programs. Uh, one is to offer programs ourselves, uh, like this one uh, that we're doing in uh, partnership with the center. Um, but we also have a grant program. So we do offer grants to history organizations and to history programs and projects um, that really document and share and, and uh, um, raise awareness of the very rich and diverse history of New Jersey. So um, while I'm delighted that you're here this morning for today's program, I, I certainly hope that you'll uh, go to our website, history.nj.gov, and learn about, more about the uh, grant program and other program offerings that we do have. And now I wanted to introduce um, um, a very special person to us in the Department of State. She is our Deputy Chief of Staff. And I'm also very proud to uh, share with you that she has recently uh, earned her doctorate in public administration from the University of Baltimore. My pleasure to introduce Dr. Lauren Zyrick. Thank you. Muchas gracias por la invitación en este mes de la herencia hispana para hablar sobre su voto 2020 y celebrar los 100 años del voto de la mujer. Es un honor estar con mis colegas Sara y Sarah y con los estimados miembros del panel. El 2020 marca el aniversario de cuando se aprobó la décimo novena enmienda de la Constitución, que concedió a las mujeres en los Estados Unidos el derecho a votar. Y New Jersey ratificó esta ley el 9 de febrero de 1920. Es importante recordar que New Jersey jugó un papel crítico en el movimiento del sufragio para la mujer. Debido a una clausa de 1776 en la Constitución del Estado, las mujeres en New Jersey podían votar cuando en esos momentos en muchas partes del país no dejaban a las mujeres votar. Ese derecho se les fue quitado en 1807, pero las mujeres de New Jersey continuaron con su abogacía para el sufragio. New Jersey fue el hogar de figuras claves como Alice Paul, Lucy Stone, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Reverenda Flores Spearing Randolph y Violet Johnson, quienes continuaron con la lucha para el voto y con reformas sociales. Este año, New Jersey ha celebrado con eventos y programas enfocados en explorar la historia de las mujeres y el voto. La iniciativa de Las Mujeres de New Jersey Votan es liderada por la Comisión Histórica, el Instituto de Alice Paul y por más de 70 organizaciones. Y para esta elección general del 3 de noviembre, con el gobernador Murphy, la secretaria de Estado Kejisha Wei y la División Estatal de Elecciones, hemos lanzado nuestra campaña educativa integral New Jersey Vota, seguro, sencillo y protegido. La campaña se enfoca en educar a la comunidad sobre la elección e incluye una promoción multimedia y nuevo sitio de web vote.nj.gov que ayudará a responder preguntas sobre el registro para votar, votación por correo, rastreo de balotas, buzones seguros de elecciones, votación en persona y mucho más. La campaña educativa está especialmente diseñada para ayudar a los votantes a entender el proceso de votación por correo y los recursos adicionales disponibles para las elecciones generales de este año. 
La campaña educativa también se desplegará en varios idiomas, incluyendo en español, y le recordará a los votantes que voten, firmen, sellen y devuelvan su voto por correo. Si los votantes necesitan asistencia o tienen alguna pregunta, sus funcionarios electorales locales del condado y estatales están disponibles para ayudarles. Los votantes pueden comunicarse con estas oficinas o llamar a la línea de información y protección del votante 1877 New Jersey Voter. Y ahora este gran panel hablará sobre las elecciones y comunidad. Este es nuestro momento y es nuestro deber cívico. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Excellent. Thank you very much um, for being us, here with us today. Uh, before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to the amazing team at the Center for Hispanic Policy Research and Development, um, to Maria Miranda, our Deputy Director, and Clarabel Martinez, who really make this come together, as well as a, a great, you know, huge virtual hug to the team and to the team at the Historical Commission, the Executive Director, Sarah Curitan, who you heard few minutes ago and her team as well, Erica and Greer, who have helped make this possible today. It is because of partnerships like these that we are able to bring such a dynamic, you know, team together of panelists and speak about the issues that affect our Latino communities. That is so important. Today's conversation is really going to be real talk. And that's how we're going to carry this. There is no question that should, if you have a dying question that needs to be asked, put it in the chat. I've already received some questions, so I have them here. <laughs> um, so I will be asking them later to our panelists, but just in case you have a question, feel free to join in the chat. I, you know, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a little bit about the center. I am the director of the New Jersey Center for Hispanic Policy Research and Development, which is a part of the Department of State, and currently I serve under the Governor Murphy's administration. The center is truly the gold standard for organizations of its kind. The center, also known as CHPRD, was established in 1975 to address the needs of the Hispanic community. We support our nonprofit organizations who provide pathways to citizenship programs, entrepreneurship trainings, mental health services, workforce development, and so much more. In addition, our stellar internship program known as the Governor's Hispanic Fellows Program, now celebrating its 32nd year. We also have a few individuals on here, and one happens to be our panelist, who is an alumni of that Governor's Hispanic Fellows Program in the early 90s. And so we are honored to have her give back to the center. And that is Wendy Martinez. Thank you, Wendy, for joining us today as well and being a part of this. And I just wanna also mention some some amazing people that are on this call. Commissioner Ashley Gomez from South Brunswick, Commissioner on the Status of Women. Ashley, thank you for joining us. We have some executive directors from the nonprofit sector who have got, gone above and beyond during this pandemic time to ensure that our Latino communities have the food. You know, they had food pantries. Our youth had summer programs and so forth. So I really, really want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for the amazing work and we remember uh, of, of your, your tireless efforts going through this difficult time and we understand and we just want to say thank you i see the executive director of focus in newark maritza arauz who's here with us today maritza thank you for joining us here as well as all angela gonzalez from south jersey servicios de burlington county thank you for being here and thank you for your leadership and the great work that you are both doing in the north and in the south areas of this great state and being a part of the chprd family so without further ado get started i oh I'm sorry, I, I'd be remiss also if I didn't mention my Lupe sisters who are here today. Um, one as a panelist, who's the vice president of Lupe, Yvette Mosquera, and some of the board members that are joining us today. Thank you for being here, Amy Salom Rodriguez, and some of our scholars. I, you know, I just, I just, I'm so excited to see them here getting up early because they are the next generation of leaders, and it's great to see them. Amarillis Rodriguez, Miguel Cardona, 
at Ashley Gomez Jimenez, like I mentioned earlier. You guys are the next generation and we're excited. We're excited that you got up early on a Friday to join us. <laughs> and they have done some amazing grassroots work. I know in Perth and Boy Amaryllis, you are out there in the trenches um, getting it done. Thank you. Knocking on doors. Ashley, you're doing your thing. Miguel and so forth. Um, Denise, thank you for joining us. Well, everyone, so let's get the party started, like I like to say, early at 10 a.m. Oh, Maria Andrade, Luisa Torres, you know, top leaders in New Jersey, who also get it done in North Jersey, in Hudson and Essex County. And so these are really, really great people on this call. So we're looking forward to your feedback, to your questions, and let's get started. I'm going to read these these panelists today have some impressive resumes that if I was to go into it, we would be here for hours. So I would love for them to give you some of their highlights, but I will read some of their resumes as respectfully so because they are so well deserving. These are the top leaders of New Jersey, extremely hardworking and are committed and passionate about the work that they do. Not only that, they have made impacts in this great state throughout the entire state. They continue to do this work. And so it's really great to have them here today. So thank you. Each of our wonderful panelists will have an opportunity to continue on their bio, but I just wanted to give you a little brief intro into who you have here today. She is one of the top New Jersey's political consult consultants in ethnically, linguistically, and social economically diverse communities with a particular focus on interfaith relations and hyper-local media relations. She has played a key role in numerous high-profile democratic campaigns at the federal, state, and local levels. Among them are Corzine for Governor, Cory Booker for U.S. Senate, Bonnie for Congress, Democrat State Committee coordinated a general elections campaign of 2014. Additionally, in the last over 20 local legislative races, most served as senior strategist committee coordinated campaigns to support Murphy for governor and state Latino political director for the Menendez for Senate 2018 as an independent minded person Holds her own thing, Jersey community strong. A true advocate, a woman of faith, my beautiful Queen Esther, top leader, a humble, and my sister Wendy Martinez. Wendy, thank you. Next, we have the wonderful and beautiful and amazing Yvette Mosquera, my Lupa sister, who is the marketing director of marketing public relations, development, and government affairs at Matheny School and Hospital in Peapack, New Jersey. She has also joined now and recently in July of 2019, well, not so recent, about a year ago, joined the League of Women Voters as New Jersey, of New Jersey as the board director. In this capacity, she helps the statewide league in supporting local leagues with their efforts to promote democracy through voter registration, advocacy, civic engagement, and community outreach. Yvette has served as a board of trustee for the Lupe Fund, Latinas United for Political Empowerment, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating, empowering, and engaging Latinas to promote leadership and civic engagement since 2008. She has served two successful consecutive terms as president of Latinas United for Political Empowerment from 2015 through 2016. During her tenure, she was co-chair of the Young Latina Leadership Conference and one of the founders and co-chairs of the Young Latina Leadership Scholarship Committee. She has co-chaired two successful statewide Latina summits in 2014 and 2016, and has served as co-chair of Elección Latina, an election training program co-sponsored by Lupe and Rutgers Cancer, I mean Rutgers Center for American Women in Politics. Thank you, Yvette, for your great work, and thank you for being here with us today. She was also born in Newark, New Jersey, which is my hometown, so shout out to Newark, Brick City, she is a proud wife and a mother of two young, amazing young men. And last but certainly not least is one of New Jersey's top, another top leader and who is a young man who I am so proud of, Juan Carlos Lordello. He currently served as Le legislative director for Assemblywoman Yvonne Lopez in the 19th legislative district. Working in the nonprofit, private and public sectors respectively, Juan Carlos has a wealth of experience to share. As a former director of development and grant writer, 
at the Puerto Rican Association for Human Development in Perth and Boy, Juan Carlos was integral in securing philanthropic funds for programs ranging from housing, counseling, to HIV education, prevention, and disaster resiliency and recovery. While working in the nonprofit center, Juan Carlos advocated for the rights of the undocumented community in disaster recovery and successfully created and managed one of the largest Hurricane Sandy recovery programs, specifically focused on the undocumented population in the state of New Jersey. A graduate from Baruch College, where he worked for the Center for Nonprofit Strategy and Management, analyzing developmental trends among successful nonprofit organizations nationwide. Additionally, he was a fellow there where he worked within the Department of Intergovernmental Relations at the United States Department of Commerce. As a fellow, Juan Carlos was responsible for tracking legislation, acting as a liaison between the department and members of Congress, as well as tracking additional national initiatives for the department. Returning to New Jersey, Juan Carlos serves, as I mentioned, the director, legislative director to Assemblywoman Ivan Lopez. He's responsible for maintaining the Assemblywoman's policy portfolio, as well as developing new legislation and ensuring bills remain on the track to becoming law. He is an executive member of the Union County Young Democrats and one of New Jersey's top leaders who I can't wait to see what his future holds. Thank you all for being here today. And so the first question is, if you won't mind adding maybe to some of the wonderful things that I've already mentioned, but give a brief intro and briefly discuss why does voting matter to you? My, is it my turn, Sarah? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. yeah, sure. Okay, my apologies. So voting matters to me because it is my right and because in so many parts of the world that is not possible. Um, for me, voting matters to me because vote, um, elections have consequences, right? And I feel that if I don't vote, somebody else is going to vote for me. And I don't want other people to make decisions for me. Um, in Espanol, I guess I can say, uh, la razón por la que yo voto es porque elecciones tienen consecuencias. Y yo no quisiera que otras personas voten por mis intereses. Yo quiero que mi voz sea escuchada como ciudadana americana, nacida aquí. Yo quiero que mi, mi voto cuente. Um, so, thank you for the kind introduction, Sarah. Um, as the son of um, Cuban refugees and, and who uh, most of my family were political prisoners in Cuba, um, the right to vote is something that was taught in my family to be sacred. So, voting uh, is the, an opportunity in our system of government to share our voice and to, to let our elected officials, uh, number one, know what we care about, and number two, um, we have to elect leaders that represent the values that we hold dear. And voting is our, not only our civic duty, but our, our major opportunity to affect change, both in our communities at the national level. And it's, it's truly something that has not only been fought for, but it's so sacred that people have died for the right to vote. And I think it's often lost upon us um, that, that there were suffragettes, and there were civic icons and there were activists that marched and, and got beat up and got shot at and harassed and they all did it for the right to vote. So if those folks who fought so hard for our right to vote deemed it such a monumental thing, then I think it's only appropriate that we do that and we don't waste um, every opportunity that we have to voice our opinion because they died for that. And something that is worth dying for is something that we should all hold dear uh, in our lives and in our actions. So we need to vote, vote, vote. Thank you all. Those were all great answers. And I love what you said that it's our voice. Our vote is our Latino voice. And we want it to be heard, especially in such an important election coming up in a couple of weeks. So the next question is, the year 2020 marks 100 years since women in the United States were granted the right to vote through the 19th Amendment. 
Are there any moments in your history or in the history of our country that inspired you to vote? Now, let me just also remind everyone, theoretically in 1920, that happened. But however, in reality, most black women or women of color were barred from voting until the passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. Mm -hmm. So can you answer that? Um, perhaps I'll throw this over to the young ladies in the panel. And perhaps, are there any moments in history or in our country that inspire you to go out and vote? So um, much like Juan Carlos's family, um, in my family, it was just a given. I was always taught from the time I was born that voting is one of the, the most important things that we can do. So when I turned um, 17, I was able to register. When I turned 18, I voted right away, like without even thinking about it. Um, so it was just something natural that, that just came to me, but I didn't really start thinking about how my vote impacted the community until I want to say like when it really hit me was when Hillary Clinton lost the election. Um, I felt so excited. I was so excited to see a woman become president that when she did not win, I was really heartbroken and it was kind of like, oh, wait a second we have a chance to change things. We have the opportunity to do things to make this country better and to see women of color, women, um, you know, people of color in leadership positions. And that's kind of when I, I became, like the kids say, woke. <laughs> and, and I started, you know, thinking about, oh my God, all the stuff that I've been doing, all the volunteer work, and, and now, you know, I have to do more. Um, in Espanol, Básicamente, el, la elección de Hillary Clinton, cuando Hillary Clinton perdió la presidencia, eso fue como una llamada para mí, como que me desperté y dije, oh my God, una mujer podía haber sido presidenta de los Estados Unidos. Tenemos que hacer algo, tenemos que hacer algo para que las mujeres y las minorías, los morenos y, la, y los hispanos y los asiáticos seamos eh, eh, estemos en posiciones de liderazgo y eso como que me levantó y, y, y me dio más ganas de ayudar a la comunidad. What I would say, I, actually, let me just get back a little bit to the original question. What I have found, um, particularly in New Jersey, is that a lot of people say, you know, my vote won't matter. This is a blue state. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> And to me, I find that the personal is political, which is why I always tell people, you voting, yes, it's a call to action, and every year is an important year to vote, right? Because, <clears throat> excuse me, 2016, 2020, like it's not until we have these presidential elections that you hear more voices echoing the same thing. However, <clears throat> elections um, have even higher consequences at the local levels for us, which is why I always say to people, voting, you need to embrace it as part of your value system. Until we do that, I, I don't know if everyone would agree, but you look at, you know, you can go to an event, you can do everything, right? But when you see your picture on that event, or when there is a role for you, or when someone is expecting you to deliver, now you're going to own it and you're going to feel that you have to follow through. So for me, voting is the same thing. We need to own it. It has to become part of your value system of what you do, where not voting is not even, you know, a thought. So for me, my father became the first union leader to organize bodegueros in the Dominican Republic. I was very young, I think I was like five or six years old. And because my father organized it, it was during a time that the politics was very difficult in Dominican Republic and there was all kinds of civil unrest, my father was put in jail. And um, I mean, if you know anything about third world country jail, it's not the best place to be. And I remember like if it was right now that my father was not there. And when I asked, I was told because your father stood for something. 
So at that moment, it was like an aha moment, a game changer forever, where not doing so, not voting, not participating, it is not a choice for me. It's not something I can think about. It becomes an automatic. So that's why I say that, you know, we all have to find what is so personal to us because when it matters here, it matters here and then it becomes an action. Thank you. Wow. I'm sure that resonated with many of us, you know, on this call, the struggles that our families had to go through in their countries and then come here to this country as well. And so I love what you talk about our, vo our vote does matter, right? That one vote can make a difference in a local election, you know, or any election. It can make a difference because that one vote plus the other vote plus the other vote, it's a difference sometimes. People lose by 50 votes. We've seen that. And so your vote does matter. And so it's important that all of us that are here remember this and that we get out the vote. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Yvette. Um, can, can perhaps some of you tell me about what seems to be different about this year's election process? We hear a lot of things. What, what do you feel is different about this year's election process? So I, I can start. Um, so formally, uh, you know, we all know the COVID-19 pandemic um, has, has not only ravaged the nation as a whole, our state, but also disproportionately impacted our community. Um, the Latino community, we have some of the highest death rates, especially with uh, Latino men. Um, so in, in, in accordance, in order to let our, our vote count and our vote adjust to the COVID-19 pandemic, Governor Murphy um, instituted an executive order that made this election primarily vote by mail. Um, and I think it's important to note that there's a lot of negative rhetoric by this presidential administration and by leaders uh, that are trying to disenfranchise voters in saying that a vote by mail election is fraudulent or that a vote by mail election is, is inherently fraudulent. So I think the election is different because for many of us last year in comparison, many of us went to the polls and, and we voted and this time it's a, it's a completely different experience. However, to complement Governor Murphy's initiatives, the legislature took it upon itself to ensure that vote by mail uh, was protected in many ways. So the Department of State in partnership also, we've expanded the number of ballot drop boxes that are available in our communities. We allowed voters to check the status of their ballot to make sure that it was counted. We passed a sweeping reform of the Ballot Cure Act, which allowed voters to to correct any mistakes that they found on their ballot. And that's all towards the preservation of, of Sarah's original sentiment and, and the sentiment that has been shared by, by both of the other panelists, which is your vote counts. So we are trying to make sure that your vote counts no matter what, and that you're not discouraged from voting by mail because of that. You can obviously still vote uh, provisionally in person, although it is suggested that you vote by mail. And I'd really encourage everyone to to understand that this is a safe way to vote, it's a effective way to vote, and it's completely secure. So the percentages of vote by mail fraud uh, throughout the case in Oregon, for example, which is the first state to do it, um, it they had to go back 19 years to find 15 cases of fraud. It's within 0.0001% fraud. There is no cases um, in New Jersey and it's it's a completely secure way so that is primarily the way that this election uh, has been changed and the department of state um, has been doing a great job educating voters and making all this information accessible to folks so you know although we all miss going to the polls getting our sticker putting it in our pin and 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 having the privilege of voting in person we have to adjust to the times and it's important that we vote by mail and that we, we fundamentally believe that this system will work because it's protected and our, our votes will count. Wendy, can you give us your insight on that as well? You're on mute, Wendy. Sweetie, you're on mute. It's okay. So again, you know, what I'm gonna encourage all of us and having been doing elections now for um, almost two decades is that what I have found is we can talk to, we're blue in the face, right? We know this is going to be a challenging election because of the um, vote by mail and all of that. 
and confusion and the fear factor, right? Particularly in our community, which is very real. But <clears throat> what it's going to take is that each one of us that are, that are participating, we make it a goal that we're going to identify 10 people, 10 people in our circle of trust, and we're gonna make sure they vote. It's as simple as that. There's a lot of, you know, all kinds of um, analogies, right? Like for instance, I have right here, according to the Pew Center, that in 2016, only 47.6% of Latinos voted versus 48% of Latinos that voted in 2012, even more uh, troubling in 2008, we had almost 51% of Latinos that voted. Mm. Um, so when we look at all of that, it shows us a very troubling trend in our community and we can slice it so, so many ways. But you know, to me, what I always say is, what is my call to action? We know all of this, right? What is the call to action? It's as easy as, especially now going online, actually the state of New Jersey voting resources are amazing in the toolkits. So it's taking that. That is what, you, what it's going to take. And again, it's that local message. Why does it matter to me, right? Because I hear a lot of people right now that are telling me, I'm not going to vote. You know, my vote is not going to matter. He's going to be there or, or Biden is going to get there. It's not going to make a difference. But when I say, do you know that whoever stays in that White House, it's going to determine the next package of relief and stimulus money that we get, that you get, that is going to help you get back on your feet. Oh, oh, really? Oh, oh, okay. Now I get a different, a different response. And to end my point, when I did Senator Menendez's campaign, and I was his Latino director, um, <clears throat> it was not a sexy campaign, to say the least. Um, not to mention that we were out and out spent. For every dollar our campaign had, they had five. And that doesn't even include the super PACs that were out there. And I would get a lot of Latinos, you know, I love our senator, we all love him, but it was not easy talking about him. He was not an easy sell, as I, as I like to call it. And I would say to people, well, <clears throat> you know, Wendy, I'm not gonna vote for you, whatever. And I would say, okay, here I'm gonna tell you one reason why you should. You know why? Because he is Bob Menendez, because his last name is like ours, because we need him being part of that one, Hundred, If nothing else, think about that. And when you tell me that he did this, he did that, I'm like, do you know that they all do it? Everyone to one degree or another. But when I would say it is about us, I'm like, if it's nothing else, your last name is Rodriguez, his last name is Menendez. That matters. That has a value. And I will tell you, it was an immediate game changer. So again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of, we talk about it, but let's make it personal. Find out what, who in your circle, is it women, is it children? Whatever that is, then we need to touch that nerve to get that person to come out, but it has to be personal. If voting is not personal for you, it does not work. No matter what we do, it doesn't work. It could be a one-shot deal, but it will not be something that's continuous. Wow, wow, excellent. Thank you, thank you, Wendy, for that. Um, you know, if anyone would like to add any resource links that we can share with the attendees today, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll be saving the chat, and later we'll be sending an email thanking you all to, for participating. And in there, we'll be adding some resource links that you can share with your networks as well. So please feel free to add that on there. So just basic, you know, how, how do you register to vote? We know the deadline is coming up. How do you register to vote? Um, so I guess I'll take that one. 
Um, so to be a U.S. citizen, you uh, have the right to vote and you can register at any time. Now in New Jersey, the deadline is Tuesday, October 13th. So it's coming up soon, um, but you still have time. You can still register. Luckily, now we have an online uh, registration process and you can go to vote.nj.gov um, to register. You can also find more information on the League of Women Voters website, the Vote 411 website on um, where to register. But luckily, people are allowed to register online now. Um, you have to be 17 years old to register, but you cannot vote until you're 18. So as soon as you turn 18, if you turn 18 before November 3rd election, you can vote as long as you're a registered voter. Um, you have to be a resident of a New Jersey county at least 30 days before the election. Um, you cannot be serving a sentence of incarceration for a felony conviction. However, good news is that individuals on probation and parole or parole are eligible to register to vote now. It's very exciting. The League of Women Voters fought hard, you know, with along with a lot of other organizations, great organizations here in New Jersey, to give people on parole and on probation the right to vote. So please, you know, please do that. You know, the other day we were doing um, voter registration drive in Elizabeth, and there was a young man who said, "No, no, I can't, I can't register because, you know, I just got out of jail." I was like, "Good news! Now you can register." And he registered. I was very excited, you know, for him. Um, so that was really great. The deadline again is October 13th. You can register to vote up until that day. You can do it online on vote.nj.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. Yes, that is great news. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. I also think that for our community, there is time that we are trying to register people for the vote and they say that they don't have time to fill out la aplicación o que no, que no tienen tiempo ir en el correo electrónico para hacerlo y no saben eh, que el voto de ellos no van a contar y and I just think that in our community we need to let people know that it's, it's easy to, to get registered to vote and the resources to help you get registered to vote are there because you have people that are reticent and they, they don't want to go through this five, 10 minute process. Um, it's, it's akin to the census. The census is also very easy to fill out and yet people don't find the time to do that. So to the extent that you, um, in your own right, all of you as, as ambassadors for voting can walk someone through that process and can be there for them, whether it's uh, your mom uh, or whoever's not registered to vote, um, making those calls to your friends that aren't registered and just walking them through that five minute process, mm -hmm. that really helps because uh, once someone sees how easy it is, um, they're, they're more likely to do it. But it, they, have to, they have to understand that, it, that it's easy. So if someone says they don't have time, please make the time to, to do it with them so that you can just get it done. Um, because that's gonna make all the difference. Um, you can't rely on an individual to, to look at a piece of paper and say, you know what, I'm gonna go register to vote. I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure they actually do in front of you. Um, I've had people get annoyed with me, but um, I make them do it in front of me and then they see how easy it is and it you know, takes, takes minutes. So I think it's important that we, we not only educate people on how to do this, but we actively help people to do it. Mm -hmm. Sí, lo que dice Juan Carlos es verdad. Es muy fácil eh, registrarse especialmente como todo está online. No se demora más de cinco minutos. No le piden mucha información, um, pero es muy fácil. Y si necesitan ayuda, pueden entrar a, a estos websites, vote.nj.gov, y hay personas que, que le pueden ayudar. Ustedes pueden llamar a la Liga de Mujeres Votantes, League of Women Voters of New Jersey, and we'll pick up the phone, you know, and we'll help you through the process. Um, entonces, es, es muy importante lo que está diciendo Juan Carlos, es verdad. No es difícil, no se demora mucho, y, y es uh, seguro online. Excellent, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, Yvette and Juan Carlos for that. Um, so I'm going to jump to the next question, but I think somehow we've already answered it. So I'm going to kind of follow up with some questions I've got from our attendees, which are two that are kind of aff affiliated with this. So we heard a little bit about some misconceptions about vo voting in this upcoming election. But so the question is, do ballots come in Spanish? And if I go to the polls, what should I expect? 
I still want to go to the poll. Todavía quiero ir al, al, you know, al site a votar. Sí. So, ¿cómo, qué, ¿qué debo esperar cuando llego ahí? Depende, <coughs> depende del condado. Eh, porque las urnas solamente van a haber algunas que la van a tener abierta. Lo que sí van a tener son las cajas de, de buzones. No sé si algunos de ustedes la han visto porque ya le están poniendo. Son como un buzón de correo, pero está específicamente marcado por la oficina del superintendente de elecciones, perdón, del condado eh, en donde usted vive. Solamente van a haber algunas urnas muy específicas. Y lo que voy a hacer es que le voy a enviar el link. Eh, es un poro que de hecho lo tiene el Estado, la oficina eh, de, de la secretaria de Estado, donde te conecta con todos los secretarios de los diversos condados. Y hay una lista de algunas de las urnas, perdón, los centros de votación que están abiertos. Pero sí lo que va a haber muchos son los buzones para entrar la boleta una vez que lo complete. And Sarah, um, the, it's also, I think it can't be said too often, while we've talked about some of the, the misconceptions, um, we're all extremely proud to be Latino from the Caribbean, where, wherever we're from. And I think it's important that we use that pride to realize that for the first time in our history, Latinos make up the largest share of non-white voters in this country. And what we read a lot on, on CNN or whatever your news source is, is that um, suburban educated white women or suburban educated uh, white voters are the ones that flip seats in Congress, are the ones that flip local elections, are the ones that, that it should be focused on. That's not true uh, anymore. So um, the people that are, that are making a difference in swing states especially are Latinos. And when we show up overwhelmingly to the polls and when we vote overwhelmingly, we shift and influence elections in an extent that we've never seen before. Um, because we are the largest minority in this country, um, we, we have value as a collective voice. So don't let people, I guess, discourage you from voting um, by saying that your vote doesn't count. Not only does your vote count um, in the singular, your vote counts as part of the Latino community at large, because we, we really do have tremendous power in this election and, and really in all elections. Um, so we need to unite behind that and we need to realize that, that these, um, the voices uh, that used to flip seats are, are no longer the voices and that, that our voice and, and our community is the one that, that really has a, a true um, national impact um, from, from the, the power of our, of our electorate and, and the voices that, that we can use to elect people that look like us. Because I think that's what this is really, really all about. Um, and, and I think it should also be noted that while some people will say that voter disenfranchisement in this country doesn't exist, that's simply not true. Uh, we, it's important that when we get our news about elections, we don't get it from Facebook, that we get it from reputable sites, like the ones that Yvette and, and Wendy have pointed out to, because in the age of the internet, it's so easy to confuse voters and to trick them and to, to lead them astray and to make them believe that, that, that uh, maybe they, they can't vote for some reason, that polling locations have changed. So all of this stuff, these are all tactics that people are using because they don't want us to vote. And it's important that we vote and that we overcome these by going to trusted elected officials or trusted members of our community to find out the real resources so that we don't get duped and so that people in our community who don't know any better um, don't get duped as well. Wow, excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. I saw some questions in the chat. I want to make sure they're being answered. Felicia, um, did you, were you able to see some of the responses that were there? provided for you. If you still have any questions, anyone has any questions, please make sure you put it onto the chat. There's some great information being shared, but we will share all of these resource links in an email as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. So what is the most important thing you want voters to know as they head to the polls this year?
maybe we'll start with uh, Wendy. What is the most important thing you want us to know as we head to the polls? The most simple, because you should. You should. Very, mm -hmm. Very well yeah. said. You should. You know, I, I, I want to give you all uh, share an, an example of the, you know, being one of the things that I also uh, do in politics is I do something called um, border model modeling. Um, I'm very, I'm one of, um, one of very few political consultants that also know numbers. I'm very aggressive when it comes to get out the vote, but in numbers, I don't do soft touches. So when I look at a model and I see that, you know, let's say in this community, there are a block or a couple of blocks where people have not voted in the last three, four elections, let's say, or last two, because those are the ones that, that we look at when we're doing these modelings, I am going to ignore you. And that is what I find, th that is what I need us to understand. If we do not vote, when these polls are done, we do not matter because they're not polling from people like us because we simply don't count. So that's why I said that, that because, you know, because you should, because I need to do it, because I'm going to do it. So again, I just can't stress enough where that ownership becomes so important. And I actually have a challenge for, for all of us before we finish, but yeah, like, you know, I asked Senator Booker last night, I said, you know, Senator, um, forget the fact that you're Senator. If I see you at a bodega, you know, and I ask you, why should I vote? What would you tell me? And, you know, he went into talking about why this election matters and what's at stake. But think about it. If I only give you a 60 second window, what are you going to tell me that is going to motivate me, that is going to ignite in me? I have to vote. So that's what, you know, we need to think about because each one of us, we are a messenger, right? So if I get a text from Sarah or Juan Carlos, who I text all the time, um, you know, the minute it pops up, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get back to Sarah, I gotta get back to Juan Carlos. So again, this is where we make it personal. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to send to Sara like a little text message in English and Spanish that we can send out to our various communities, our various friends, because when they see it, they're going to open it. So it gives us a 30 second to 60 second window to get that person to register or to go vote. So it's personal. I agree with um, with Wendy and to piggyback on what you know she was saying is it's it's not about it's not just about us, right? We live in a community. We have family members, we have children, we have grandparents, we have goddaughters, godsons. And when I vote, I was talking about this to a family member who was telling me, oh, I'm not gonna vote, I don't like either of them. I said, okay. Fine, but this is what we have. We have these two choices, right, for the presidential election. So you should, like Wendy said, you should vote because you're a U.S. citizen, but you should vote for the person who has your values, right? Who, who closely aligns with your own values, your family's values? Who do you think is, is going to do right by you? In addition to that, I vote, me personally, I vote for the immigrants in my family who don't have a voice. I vote for my children who are not 18 yet. I vote for, you know, people who are residents who haven't become citizens yet, you know, because they matter too. They work here. They work here legally. They're residents, but they don't have a vote. And so, you know, they're using our public transportation. We're using our education. We're using our hospitals. We're using everything that you know, politics basically, you know, organizes for us on the day-to-day -day basis and they don't have a voice. So what do I do? I feel like it's my responsibility as a U.S. citizen 
to, to, to vote for them, for their best interests. I want my kids to have a good future. I want the best for my children and my grandchildren. So this is why, you know, I go out there and I make sure that I read about the candidates and I learn about what their values are so that they can align to mine. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. Nadie. Nunca nadie va a ser perfecto. Okay? Pero podemos votar por la, la persona que está más alineada, más cerca a nuestros valores. Nuestros valores para nuestras familias, para nuestras iglesias, para nuestros hermanos, para nuestros hijos, para los indocumentados, para los residentes que no pueden votar. Yo pienso que es por eso que deberíamos salir a votar. No importa que una persona no sea perfecta y la otra no así, es, no importa. Esas son las opciones que tenemos y con... con a, a, a formar nuestro futuro y la, el futuro de nuestros hijos. Thank you, Eva. Juan Carlos, did you want to add something? Yeah, I mean, I tend to agree uh, with both Wendy and Aveth. And if there are three words, um, it's safe, secure, important, seguro, fácil, importante. This vote, uh, this election, I guess we're, we're voting like our lives depend on it uh, to many extents. And regardless of whether, which political party you believe in, um, it's important that you exercise your support for that issue. And, and for those folks that, that think our vote doesn't matter, I also point voters to the ballot questions that we have. Um, where we're deciding on things like redistricting and, and the legalization of, mar of recreational marijuana in this state and tax deductions for peacetime veterans. And th that goes to the voters, directly to the voters of New Jersey. So if the voters overwhelmingly vote no on marijuana, for example, our state will not have recreational marijuana. That is up to the voters. That is a direct impact on what the voters want to see in their state. So when you're looking at candidates, it's also important to know that, that your vote matters in local uh, races, um, that the ordinances that your city council and your mayors pass in municipal government impact your life. Um, and, and with going to, to voters at the poll, I think something important is, um, so I work for an, a tremendous assembly woman, um, but my mother has no idea what uh, my boss does nor what I do for my boss. Uh, she, she tries to explain it often, right? And I'm sure that Wendy and Yvette and, and have had the same conversations with their family members um, and they have no idea what they're talking about um, because people, people just, it's, it's mystifying to them what, what politics is. And people are so entrenched in, in the facts of hyper-partisanship and calling politics an ugly sport. And it's not, it's a, it's a sport about, uh, the community collective, and it's a sport about uh, ensuring that our voices are represented to a degree. So aside from, from educating voters on the importance of their vote, I think it's also educating people on the importance of what government does and the role that elected officials play in our lives. Because for better or worse, our system of government relies on that. And, and our choice in those elected officials, especially in the races where, where we have a more direct control, that's what voters need to know about that if you don't like your alcalde or your concejal, that you, you pound the pavement and you, and you may, let it be known that, that you don't like that person. And when you go to, uh, for many of us, I'm sure you've walked, but um, nada me da más molestia que una persona hablando de, de su comunidad y dando queja. Entonces le pregunto, ¿votaste? Y me dicen que no. En, en, en mi opinión, and it's not a popular opinion, esa persona no tiene derecho de hablar sobre las quejas, porque no votaron. Y, y si a ti no te gustan eh, la, la, las cosas que están pasando en la administración eh, de Trump, um, y, y especialmente las cosas que eh, están atacando a nuestra comunidad latina, eh, tienes que votar, porque no tienes derecho de hablar, en mi opinión, de ese tema si no votas. Um, el voto es importante para expresar eh, su, su queja. So, in order to participate, you, you, you have to vote. And that's why it's so integral. So again, if someone asks you a question, seguro, fácil, importante, safe, secure, and extremely important. Um, and we need to educate voters not only about the importance of their vote, but also about the roles that government has in their life. Can I just add one more thing that Juan Carlos brought up with the ballot questions? Um, the ballot questions can be very difficult for people to understand. 
it's hard for me to understand and I went to college. So imagine a grandma or a mom who just have a high school education, it's hard. Um, so I just wanna encourage everybody to go, the League of Women Voters took the time to analyze the questions and simplify them. And they actually gave us an explanation of why you would vote no and why you would vote yes. Um, and so I would encourage you to go onto the League of Women Voters website, LWVNJ, I'll put it on the chat, um, dot org, because I think that really helps us to understand what we're voting yes or no for. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to encourage that. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so we have heard so many great things today, this morning, and I want to thank you all for your patience in dealing with the technology issues that we had. And thank you for joining us back on. This has been real and, and such an insight. And I love um, so many things that were said today, I hope really resonate with you and make you want to go out and do a call to action like Wendy, you know, put right in front of us, right? If we get 10 people to go out and vote, that should be what we, are, that's our goal, right? 10 or more. But if we can do that, then we've done, you know, we're, we're, we've done our, our due diligence in making sure to get people out to vote. So I'm just going to turn it over for final remarks for our panelists. We, we've heard a lot of great information today. Uh, we know that Latino voters are poised to be the largest racial and ethnic group eligible to vote in this presidential election. We talked a little bit about getting the vote out. Um, are there any final remarks you want us to all to hear today on how important it is exercising our right to vote? So we'll start with Yvette. Um, I just want to encourage people um, to talk to their families and friends. Like Juan Carlos, my family members are annoyed at me, but I still talk to them. And guess what? They learn something new every time I talk to them. Or my sister, you know, everybody, she talks to people. You know, we learn something new because, um, you know, people are busy and they go about their lives and they're not really uh, engaged the way we are into, into politics. And so... Um, it's up to us to help them navigate the system, you know. Um, so I just want to encourage people que, que hablen con sus, con sus hermanos, hablen con sus familias, hablen con sus vecinos y pregúntenles, ¿están registrados? Sí o no, si no están, mira, aquí está este website. Um, sería bueno que se registren, no se demora más de cinco minutos. Que, que empiecen a, a tener esas conversaciones. No tiene nada de malo. Eh, es algo bueno para nuestra comunidad, para que nuestra comunidad sea escuchada. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, what I would say. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. Uh, Wendy? Sure. So, lo único en, en, en resumido es el voto tiene que ser personal. Eh, uno tiene que respetarse tanto a sí mismo que tú diga no, yo voy a, con mi voto, yo voy a, a mandar un mensaje. Y es que sí me importa, pero mucho más importante, I'm looking. Yo no estoy ciega, estoy mirando y voy a participar y tengo voz. And then we, we take it, you know, we, we make it a point that um, I, I just can't emphasize that enough. I've seen it so many times where people make plans, the most consequential, and we do that, but then we don't vote in a Board of Education election where your tax dollars are the ones in that budget and the mismanagement of that budget impacts your taxes. So. Let's just make it personal. I mean, this year is an, a perfect opportunity to say, I am so mad, so mad for so many reasons. Porque somos inmigrantes, porque somos mujeres, porque durante esta enfermedad tú tienes un presidente que no le importa nada, que, eh, no ha, que hace burla al pueblo americano por completo a sí mismo y a su familia al no protegerse y asegurarse de que él no sea una bomba atómica biológica que está contagiando 
a otra persona. So, es una elección donde es tan elemental tu decisión de votar. Entonces, lo que yo diría es aprovechemos cada uno de nosotros para asegurarnos de que los otros voten, pero que además de estas de este, de esta elecciones, continúen votando porque si tú votaste hace cinco años, ya el, el rol ¿no? donde yo sigo haciendo el voter contact, ya tú no estás. Si yo voto en estas elecciones, cuando vayan a hacer las elecciones municipales, Wendy Martínez sale como que votó. Now I'm going to be talking and I'm going to be spending dollars to speak to Wendy, to educate Wendy, so she comes out to vote. So everything that we do matters, but, you know, like you said, let's focus on this election. Everyone understands the presidential election. Let's do it. And then with that, we can kickstart for um, at least two more election cycles to come to make sure that whatever party it is, is talking to that voter. So, es personal. <laughs> Hashtag. So I think um, that the you can't underscore the value of, of your vote in closing. And to use a to use a metaphor like like Wendy was saying, I think all of us, if we see something, if we see a piece of trash on the floor um, near our house, we pick it up. And if we see someone at a, a grocery store who's being harassed, most of us would step in. Um, basically, if we see something wrong, we inherently want to do something about it. That's what a vote is. So why not exercise that same principle that you often use in your daily lives at the polls? What you're doing with your vote is you're expressing an intention and you're saying, I don't like this. I would rather see that. And now I'm going to formally declare that position in, in the voice of the collective. And I think it's important to note that in some elections, the person you may have wanted to win won't win. And that's okay. So I think I, I, Sarah had mentioned it at the, the top of the call, but I think we all have experiences where people say, I hate politics. Um, and I think it's become so, uh, such a dirty word, politics, and has become so, so poisoned uh, amongst folks because it, it leads, what do they say? You don't talk about politics on a first date because it'll lead to, to, uh, to an argument. But I, I think it, it leads to a, a part of a greater discussion and, and more so a debate. On, on the importance that politics has in our daily lives. And so we can't hate politics, we have to embrace it. Because if we don't embrace politics, then we're never part of the conversation. And for our nonprofit partners that are on this call, they know the value of politics. State dollars flow directly to nonprofit organizations. And if you have a leader that doesn't care about hunger or doesn't care about housing or something like that, you won't get those dollars to the community. Um, so the people need to realize that their vote is directly tied to the programs that they hold dear and the programs that they value. We see now what the administration values. Uh, we see it in the state of New Jersey. We have a, a fantastic governor. We see what, what his priorities are and you see the priorities of the legislature and you see priorities in your local elections and on a national level. All those priorities are direct results for the constituents that those folks represent. So if you're, if the priorities that, that, the elected officials in your community have don't match your own, your opportunity to change that is every single time you vote. And you can't only vote in a presidential election, you have to vote every single year because there's a campaign going on every single year. You'd be surprised as you're walking the streets, uh, like I have in canvassing for, for my member, how many people say I don't vote because I don't care. And, and that person is, is paying taxes, and is directly benefiting from the programs that their elected officials have put into place. So you can't waste your opportunity to vote. Not participating must not be an option because you live in this state, you pay taxes, and you have priorities of your own. So why waste your opportunity to voice those priorities, um, especially in our community? And, and to give kudos to, to individuals like Wendy and Yvette, it's about coalition building, um, talking to your faith-based leaders about about the importance of voting and, and spreading that message throughout the community. So 
in closing, it's it's just super important to vote. I can't underscore that enough. And hablar con, con los amigos y la familia de la importancia de votar. En, en nuestro país, eh, las elecciones son algo fantástico y, y muchos grupos de gente se, se, se van a votar, pero eh, nosotros tenemos que realizar la, eh, la voz colectiva que nosotros tenemos en esta elección para cambiar las cosas para lo mejor. And regardless of what you believe, um, I encourage all sides to go out and vote um, because it, it matters. And, and anyone who tells you otherwise, you just have to educate them that, that um, everything they, they might hold dear is based on an election. So get out there and vote. Wow, I have really, really enjoyed this panelist today. Great way to start our weekend, right? At, at you know, getting motivated and making sure that we understand and kind of demystify some of the things that have been going on. Um, and being questions for our panels list. Um, you can feel free to unmute yourself and just ask the questions. We're pretty much in a very intimate setting. Uh, Maria, you have a question? You raised your hand? Yes, yes. I do. I have a question. So I have to speak to, in, in, my, in my work area, I have to speak to older people and in my community, right? When it comes to our Latino community, it's really, really hard to engage the elder, the, our, you know, our, nuestros tíos, nuestros primos, la comadre, el compadre, there is just, they don't exercise. Most of them, you know, they can't, okay, but some of them actually do have that how can we any anything any words that we can use especially like as my first gen i'm a first generation and i know most of us here are our parents come with you know the ideology and mentality from back home and it's a it's always a hassle like they know their politics and it just doesn't transcend the way that things go here so they don't like it and they don't want to vote any any suggestions on any keywords that we can use when having these conversations and with our immediate family. Feel free anyone to jump in, um, any of our panelists to jump in. And, but, you know, I know that, in, I'll just mention this quickly, in, in some of our countries, countries um, politics is, there's the distrust in politics and politicians. So they come with that already here into the United States, which I've noticed. But maybe uh, some of our panelists can give you some key words or key phrases to use with that, that specific audience. Um, I guess I'll start. Um, so for me, I found that when I give them tangible examples of how um, their daily lives will be affected if they don't vote, I feel that that resonates. I think it was Wendy who said that she mentioned something to someone and they were like, oh, and then they finally understood. So I think finding something that they use on a daily basis, it could be the bus, it could be anything, any um, elderly, you know, if they go to focus, they can use their programs, you know, things like that. I think finding tangible examples that they know and they understand and say, look, you know, if you don't vote, then, um, you know, money is going to be taken away from the elderly day program in New York or something like that, you know. Um, that, that might help. Um, I find that people don't really um, have those that information in front of them right away, so we have to do the research and, you know, help them to find that information and help them understand how it affects their daily lives. I think that, um, well, especially for the people who are viendo Telemundo y Canal 47 y cosas así, right? So, um, I remember my fiance was talking to Abuelita and she just asked her, um, ¿A ti te gusta el, el peli naranja que está en la presidencia? Y la Abuelita dijo, bueno, no me gusta. Entonces, tiene que votar. Um, so, a lo más básico, hablando a la gente, eh, si le gustan el presidente, si le gusta las acciones del presidente, si le gustan la, las noticias que están saliendo de este presidente, es una conversación simple que puedes tener con esa persona y, y decirle que tienen que votar. Um, a tam, también a, a los líderes que tenemos en, en la Asamblea General y, y las elecciones um, que tenemos en nuestro pueblo, lo mismo. Trabaja, que tú puedes ser y thing that is personal to them, and I think I'm using Wendy's hashtag, it's, it's personal, right? Um, I am personal, impressed. Personal. 
<laughs> make sure you so make, it, make sure you credit when you I will. <laughs> no, Marie, it's personal. You gotta put it in the yeah, chat. Yeah. The hashtag. Put it in the chat. So, la política es personal. So uh, Wendy's absolutely right. So cuando estás hablando with that person, you just say you make it personal to them and you give them examples and oftentimes you say do you like that person and if they say no or yes then you either vote for them because you like them or you vote against them because you don't like them um so i think the simpler the conversation the better and the more personal excellent excellent any other questions no okay so before we close out, I want to personally thank each and every one of you and for being here today. And I hope this was as informative as you expected when you started the call. I think it is because we managed to maintain everybody to switch over during our difficulties. <laughs> and so I am super grateful <laughs> for that. But the Center for Hispanic Policy Research and Development is committed to our Latino community, to providing programs like these, even if it's virtual, to empowering our youth because they are the next generation of leaders and um, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host but once again thank you very much from the bottom of my heart uh, to each and every one of you for being here and let's go out and make sure we vote on election day thank you so Sarah I'll turn Let me it over just to add you. my thanks and admiration for all of our panelists and for Sarah for leading this great discussion yes. uh, not only did you have amazing uh, insights into the importance of voting but you were adaptable and flexible too. <laughs> so many, many thanks. And uh, let me just encourage everyone uh, to, I'll add to your encouragement to get out there and vote. And um, this year, particularly remember that it is the 100th anniversary of women in this country getting that, that, uh, that voting uh, access. So let's get out there and vote. Thank you all. I Thank you, everyone. Be yes, Wendy. Wendy. Thank you, Sarah, for the excellent job. Thank you, Angela, for joining us. Yes, Wendy, you wanted to add a final remark? Yes, I just want to thank everyone, my fellow panelists. You know that I love you and respect you beyond words. Yeah. But I just want to cite one last example. Um, the personal is political. And Sara Peña is um, a pedigree. She She embellishes what that means because since i know her to her community women's rights representation voting has been political and i am a loyal soldier of um, sara peña she has converted me to everything has turned me on to everything that she supports and she stands for and that is what we're supposed to be doing. So that is the call to action I have today. Um, I want to be more like Sada. I want to be more like each one of you, like Yvette. Each one of us, we are so uniquely special and we are in the greatest position to impact change. And Sada, you are remarkable. And we can only have the discussion when we have people like yourself mm -hmm. who are committed and live their personal their their their, their personal lives it is um, it reflects your political your activism and as such everything that you have done as the director of the center and i just i have no words for describing your leadership. And I'm sure I'm echoing what everyone else is thinking, so. Thank you, thank you, my sister, thank you. Those words really mean a lot. Thank you, guys. I love you all. Um, I love what I do, being able to be at the forefront and be the voice and many tables and um, for all of us we are in this together and thank you it is people like wendy that inspire me right she's been and i'll just briefly say you know she's a trailblazer you know when we talk about being born and raised in newark not knowing anything she was the first latina that stepped foot in an executive leadership position for an administration for uh, sharp uh, james and she was the first dominican 
first Latina, first everything. <laughs> and when I heard that, I had no idea who she was, but I just knew this was this Dominican chick at City Hall. <laughs> and that's how we talked about it in the neighborhood. because her last name is martinez so we know that's she is representing us right the last name is martinez so we didn't care so we love sharp james right <laughs> it didn't matter he had wendy there so it was an honor to get to meet you and work with you on grassroots levels and faith-based um you know work that we've done together so and to my nonprofits, keep up the great work i am supporting you in every way that we can to my staff to the partnerships that we have here, to my friends and family that are joining us, and especially, especially to the young people that are on this call today. We are here to support one another because if one of, one, one of us makes it, we all make it together. Okay. So thank you everyone, have a wonderful